What is going on, everybody? Patrick from Crash Games here, coming to you live from my hotel room, which is only kind of creepy. I don't know. I just knew that I could not drag down the 55 unique games that I've picked up here at Essen. Now I want to. Now I want to prematurely roll the S on Essen. It's Essen Spiel. So. Um, <laughs> A mouthful of German is no good for this uh, West Coast boy. <laughs> so, okay. So, coming to you live uh, from Essen for our our last, our three of three live vlogs from uh, Essen, Germany. And today, our specific message is jumping into the games that I picked up here uh, and why I picked them up and what I'm really looking forward to and all that good stuff. And we better jump right into it because there's a lot of games to cover. So I'm um, going to try to keep this in the 20 to 30 minute mark as always. So uh, we'll jump around and um, man, that is going to be a lot of tags to put on this video. <laughs> a lot of tags um, that just popped into my head. The workload will be big. Okay, so let's start things off, <clears throat> pardon me, with a little bit of, of shameless plugging. And so that means we're going to start with the international version of Council of Verona. And so this is an insanely proud moment for me. I really wish that at Michael Eskew was here to share in this moment with me. I'll just have to bring it back to him uh, so he can see. But here we have um, one of three unique editions of international Verona. So here we have the French version. Uh, this is published by Ferdy Games. And here we have uh, the back of the box, and the art is amazing, and stay tuned for a special announcement in the coming weeks about that. And so here I'll just take you through a quick a quick look at the deck, and uh, we've got all the cards here. We got Benvolio, and Prince Escalus and um, Lord Capulet, uh, I believe we got Baltazar there, the Apothecary, and let us not leave out... Uh, Romeo and Juliet. Where are they hiding here? Okay, they're hi there's Romeo, and here we have Juliet. So there we are. Uh, amazing, amazing artwork uh, done by the very talented uh, Mathau, and I'm, I'm probably mispronouncing his name. I'm so sorry. I actually got to meet him, um, and he did some custom work because check, check out this custom image that he drew uh, inside my box. How awesome is that? And so that uh, right there is the French version of Council of Verona. And we have a couple more versions. I won't take everything out to show you, but uh, very excited uh, to also have uh, the German version. Uh, this was sub-licensed by Heidelberger uh, from Ferdi, and this is Der Rat von Verona. And so uh, there we have the back, and here we have the front. And so German rules, German cards, excuse me. And all, all around, just a, an awesome job. And then here is the thing I'm most excited to show you. And this is the Ferdy French Collector's Edition of Verona. They did it a very, very good job and put it in a nice wooden box with a metal clasp. And the boxes are actually numbered on the back. Um, and so you open it up. Now, I've taken out the cards and everything because the cards are pretty much the same. What is not the same is this phenomenal laser printing and I got Mathau to actually uh, sign the inside of my collector's box but check out this amazing glass vial that holds all the all the tokens for the game and uh, it actually has a, a cork inside so oh that that is cool that is probably that is no not, not probably that is the neatest thing uh, that I'm coming back with here and uh, coming back with one for you, Michael. So don't be disappointed. You'll definitely have one coming. So very, very nice job. Uh, Cedric with Ferdy, thank you for doing Council of Verona justice. I'm very eager and excited to see uh, how that does internationally. And so way cool, way cool stuff. Um, you guys will have to pardon me a bit. Um, I've got a bit of the sniffles. I don't have a cold, but it's been really cold and rainy the last couple days. And so I may occasionally sniff which is terrible terrible recording etiquette um but nevertheless my apologies and it, it's going to happen just a little bit so okay let's get into the rest of the games now that we got the shameless plugs out of the way and um, i'm going to have to zoom through these so when i was at the yellow booth 
Uh, those of you that may not know, it is official. Yellow is licensed both Yardmaster and Yardmaster Express uh, for many countries, mostly including the French edition. And so um, those should be coming out in the coming months. I believe Yardmaster will hit, um, right now the estimated timeline is available sometime in May of next year. And I'll be sharing that art as it comes in and as I get permission to share it. Uh, but I stopped by their booth and they um, gave me a free copy of Eat Me If You Can, which looks like a fun little, um, a fun little uh, child's game. Um, but I, it's just a, de a deduction game, basically Prisoner's Dilemma. And so uh, Mathau actually, see if I can get this open really quick because I don't want to spend uh, too much too much time on any one game. Uh, the box is a little a little tight, but Mathau, who's also the artist on this for Yellow, and he was the artist on the Ferdy version of Council of Verona, and he will also be the artist. I guess I, I'm just going to work with one artist on all my international stuff uh, for Yardmaster. So he drew me a really neat little image uh, inside the box, which I definitely appreciate. So there you have it. Uh, eat me if you can. Uh, coming up next, the second most beautiful game. Uh, that I got here at Essen and a huge thank you to my sister Suze in Seattle and then Maggie and Brig for also making this happen. It was three people to, to get me this game because I missed out on it at the show and I'm so happy to be going home with it and that is going to be Haru Ichiban um, from Black Rock Editions and this is probably one of the best looking games at the show. I mean just take a look at what's going to be happening there on that board. Uh, it's a two-player abstract game. I'll have to probably download some English rules, but wow. Just a phenomenal, like, laser-cut, colored colored game. Amazing, amazing stuff there. Uh, one of the other games that I have to give a big shout-out to, Rindert and Karina, my friends from the Netherlands. Karina is Romanian, and Rindert is Dutch. And this is another game that was on my list to pick up that I, I missed out, but they picked it up and said, you know what, we can get it again easily, so we'll just, you know, trade you something for it and that is uh, Takamatsu. And the reason why I wanted to pick this up was because it has a mechanic similar to Finca, which I'm obsessed with how the Finca works in Rondell, and I will be designing a game. Um, I wanted to have a design partner on it, though, because I don't feel that designing is my strong suit, but I have some cool ideas that I like to toss around, but it has the similar, similar mechanic um, to the Rondell and Finca, where the players move based upon how many you're picking up. Um, but it's not, it's not exactly like the, the same mechanic. And I've played this with two, and I've played it with five so far. It is not a two-player game, in my opinion. Um, so, And I think five is stretching it a bit. I think the sweet spot for this one uh, is going to be three or four. And then um, I may have to give this box cover back to Rinder and Karina because it was autographed, and I would like them to be able to have that. So I told them if they rebought it, then I would... Um, swap it for them and I'm gonna have to bend down and pick up games so I'm gonna be going off camera for a couple moments as I grab the games and the next two I'm sure I'm gonna catch a lot of flack over but one of the favorite games in in my house that my wife and my nephew and I play regularly uh, when we just want to sit down and play something and we don't necessarily want to think about it and we have fun just backstabbing each other is Skippo and so it's in, in the U.S., the Skippo is pretty much just the deck of cards. But over here, they have a couple different versions. And um, I didn't pick these up at the fair, but I picked these up at, at Toys R Us. It was about a 10-minute walk from my hotel um, and where I was getting my Kinda eggs, uh, and including that giant ostrich one. So I picked up a couple different versions of the Skippo. I got Skippo Jackpot and then um, Skippo Brettsfield. So these are like some bigger... Bigger versions of Skippo, and I hope I can find English rules online, or else I'm going to kind of be uh, out of luck there. So uh, this game I actually picked up at a local bookstore. Um, I believe it's called like Meyer, Meyer something, um, and I've actually been in there like six times uh, since I've been here. It's kind of like a uh, German Barnes & Noble, and um, <laughs> uh, one of my wife's favorite, favorite discussions that we have when we're absolutely in a silly mood is flinging poo. Um, and so I picked up this game, uh, Mit, Mist, Und, Und, Tucky, Tucky, I don't, I'm not sure how to say it by, by Hoochie. And it's basically a, a kid's dexterity game where you're flinging poo. Uh, <laughs> and so, yeah, that ought to be fun. These little poo pellets and, and I have no idea how it plays, but, um, yeah, this is a, a gift for my wife cause I know that she'll like it and you gotta love that it has a giant ball of poop on the cover with worms and flies. So I noticed a lot of games like that. So I don't know if it's a cultural 
a cultural obsession or not, but, you know, we'll see. Um, this game was actually a gift. Uh, I was near these uh, fine people's booths, and I wish I could have thanked them for it. So thank you whoever gave this to me. It happened when I was out running one of my errands. It was dropped off with my, my helper, Gordon. I believe this is a Kickstarter game, um, the uh, Galaxy of Tryon. And so um, I'm looking forward to trying this. Um, epic space games aren't, aren't really my specialty. Um, so I'll definitely give it a try as it was a gift. Um, but I'm not quite sure um, if, it's, if it's in my wheelhouse or not. And so there you have the Galaxy of Tryon uh, Deluxe. So I believe that has not been delivered to the Kickstarter backers. Ugh. So um, yikes. Uh, I had my own troubles with that of, of having to sell Pater at Yardmaster and Yardmaster Express. Uh, we won't get into that. That was for another topic. Another gift that I got from an adjacent booth is uh, Sixma King. And this looks to be a two-player abstract game. Um, reminded me a bit of Rise. I think it's a chess variant um, in which the pieces do, you know, if they're stacked differently, do different things. So um, this was a gift. And then I guess it comes with some extra figures uh, for being at, at Spiel. Spiel. So uh, we'll give that a go. And what else do we have? Okay, so I found this really cool store. Um, it's in the opposite way. So Toys R Us is that way, and this game store is that way. I'm right here on the town square. I love I love this location. I will always stay at Motel 1 uh, when I come to Essen. So this really cool store, and I don't know how to pronounce that name. Um, but I got some fantastic little gifts there. I found uh, a Christmas ornament for my mother-in-law who collects Christmas ornaments. And my mother-in-law is actually of German descent, and she has Christmas ornaments from... Uh, when her parents and her grandparents lived in Germany um, from like the early 1900s. And so I found a really cool um, ornament for her there. And I picked up some games. It's not a game store by any stretch of the imagination, but they have a, a, a small shelf uh, with a bunch of games. And so I uh, was picked up a German copy of The Builders there. Um, and I did this for a couple of reasons. One, I wanted to have the extra coins. I don't feel that this game comes with enough coins. And so I picked this up for the extra coins and I thought it'd be cool to kind of have the, the German version of it. And uh, since the names are, are sort of irrelevant to the gameplay, um, it would just be a neat thing. But mostly uh, for the extra coins. And I wanted to support uh, this cool shop. So um, the other game I picked up from them uh, on a whim, and it's actually in the box backwards. So I'm going to hold it up backwards at first, is Digger. And this looks like a really cool Asmodee game. And I just was really drawn in by the Diamond cartoon. Um, you put eyes on something that's that's not supposed to have eyes or doesn't traditionally have eyes, and it it gets my intrigue. But it looks like a really a really fun little fast game. And again, I just wanted to support this shop and come in and give them give them some business. So there you have uh, Digger by Asmodee. Um, again, uh, picked up at that shop and not at the store. Okay, so my number one stop at at Essen Spiel every year, uh, and if you know me at all, you you know what my number one stop is. It is the Japan brand booth. And a big thanks to everyone at the Japan Band Booth, uh, Simon, uh, Talk, Seiji, um, all my people at Japan Brand, and the the few the, the names that I don't know. Um, thank you so much for allowing me to get in on the pre-orders a, a little bit after the deadline. And so uh, I would be heartbroken if I didn't get it. So here comes the my Japan Brand haul. So the first one I have here, um, and I'll I'll pretty much buy anything Japan Brand has without without knowing about the game. Um, just because they are, it's my jam. It's it's my stuff. And so, and I also know that I can flip it if I don't like it for whatever reason. Um, the first one we have here is the Colors of Kassan. And this is just in a very, very cool, um, like homemade looking box. And I'll just give you a quick peek inside because they've got really neat, like the game has buttons and really neat stuff. So really looking forward to this one. Um, and very glad that I was able to to pick it up. I'm I'm worried about traveling at home with it though. It has a cloth, it has a cloth like box, and I'm worried that it's going to get damaged. So I may have to put this one in a plastic bag, as I would be heartbroken if, if something happened to it. Uh, the next one we have here is uh, Edo. I know is. Is Edo Yoshiki the designer? I'm not sure if that's the name of the game or the designer, but here we have something from. Um, Okazu brand, uh, and I hope there's English rules in here. Uh, there may not be, but I could probably snag them offline. It has the German rules on the cover, um, but this looks like a, a fun little tile laying game 
uh, comes in a bag. And again, I'll, I'll pick up anything from Japan brand. Uh, this next one is a, is a gift from my wife. And so uh, I'll probably publish this video and she'll probably see it. So honey, this one is for you. Uh, this is for my wife, Jess. It's adorable looking dexterity game called uh, Click and Crack. Um, <clears throat> last Gen Con, not this year, but the prior year, I won her the Space Penguin and I know she likes penguins. And so uh, the back of the box is unfortunately covered by the, the English rules. Um, and this one looks really, really fun. So there you have Click and Crack. Um, then this one looks really intriguing. And I, I didn't, I wasn't originally going to pick this one up, but I'm glad I decided to. Uh, we have Villain X. And this, again, I think is a, is a quick little sieve builder, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and here we have a very nice uh, thank you message on the back, shrink wrapped in. I, I just, uh, the whole aesthetics of, of the games from Japan brand, it, it just reeks of passion. Um, and I'm certainly attracted to passion. It just reeks that they care. Um, and it's just these labors of love. And I, I love everything about it. So looking forward to trying this one out. Um, and then the next uh, couple ones I have were highly anticipated. Um, I ended up picking up uh, two of these, one for my buddy David Short, uh, the designer of Yardmaster Express, and that is uh, Ninja Tyson. And so I was really intrigued by the aesthetics of this one, and it looks like uh, quite a fun quite a fun little game. I like think it has like a side scroll or a little scrolling thing where you're basically uh, trying to, it looks like, you know, take down your enemy's village. So uh, there you have uh, Ninja Tyson. Um, the next one was probably my number one game uh, that I wanted to pick up at uh, Essen Spiel, and it was also from the Japan brand booth, and that is uh, Rolling Japan. So really looking forward to this one. I'm a sucker for dice, um, and this one looks like kind of like I've not done a bunch of investigation into it, but it looks like kind of like a Roll Through the Ages Bronze Age meets Quicks. I don't know, um, but definitely definitely worth picking up and this one um, I think was out really really quick there were a lot of pre-orders for it and it didn't last long so rolling Japan I can't again by Okazu brand and this is Hisashi Hayashi so this is the designer of of trains uh, I believe he's also the designer of string railway and so very this is my number one game to play uh, when I get back for sure uh, the next one I picked up Thanks to um, uh, Chris from Board with Life's recommendation. Um, doesn't sound like it'll be my kind of game, but I'm intrigued by what what's being offered um, in it. And that's the Ravens of, of Three uh, Sahashri. I, I know I'm saying that wrong, but I think this is that two-player co-op, and um, it looks really, really neat. And um, again... I can't say this enough, just what a sucker I am for uh, Japanese games. So definitely uh, pick this one up on, on spec, and we'll see. And then one of my later purchases in the show that, that, that stuck around um, that uh, I was just like, okay, they have extra of it, I'll buy it, and that's the Edict of, of King uh, Budinia. I don't know if I'm saying that right, uh, but a bigger game uh, from the... Uh, Japan brand booth. Now, the one that I wanted really bad was Isaribi, um, and that was sold out months ago. But uh, a good buddy of mine, another publisher, and I won't mention their name, so, so I don't want them to get flooded, said that he has an unplayed copy on his desk, and if I email him, he'll send it to me. So big thanks to them. And then here we have the back. Um, it just it looked fun, and uh, it was still available. So I'm like, why not? Um, I, I'm really big at, at SN. My, my priority is, number one, Japan brand games, and number two, games that I don't think will be available in the U.S., or I think the art style or theme may change on an import to the U.S. So um, that's all my Japan brand games, uh, but let's keep this train moving. Um, this one, my buddy Gordon bought several of. Um, I missed out on. I was, I was buying. I didn't have time to go out and get a lot of games because I was running the Crash Games booth, but um, people were buying extras. I'm like, hey, I'll buy that off you and, you know, giving them extra for, for their trouble. Um, but this was one from uh, Aporta, Aporta Games, and that's uh, Doodle City. And Gordon and I played the app back at our hotel room um, later on in the night when we picked this up. And this one just looks really, really fun and different. Um, again, I'm a sucker for dice. And this one kind of looks like you're trying to string together roads. 
and the dice uh, you roll give you basically like an X, Y axis and, and give you the coordinates to, to be able to connect. And the more stuff you're able to connect, the better. And then um, because Gordon had pre-ordered this like a responsible individual, unlike some people who forget to pre-order, me, um, he got the extra uh, doodle pads with it. So awesome. I get, I get those too. So looking forward to trying Doodle City. Um, there were two games that I picked up um, in trade from um, a guy with Pegasus Spiel, and because um, we were up in the press room, and I'll get into that in just a moment, but um, when I was up there picking up all the Crash Games games that we had on display for the press and for the shops to come by and take a look at, um, he was like, would you like to trade it? I'm like, sure, um, you know, absolutely. And so I was able to pick up the uh, German reskin of, I believe this is the reskin of Morel's uh, Fungi, and so by Pegasus Spiel, um, I like Morels quite a bit. And thanks to Fred McKenzie, a couple years back, he sold me his his copy that has the the handmade sticks in it out of the golf tees. So um, I don't know how I'm going to feel about having two copies of the game, but I wanted to crack this open and see because maybe I like the card art a bit more. Uh, so maybe I can um, combine the games a bit and and take the best of both worlds. But congratulations to Two Lanterns Games. Uh, I mean, they, they did a great job with Morels and congrats on, on getting this licensed. And then I also picked up um, Port Royal. And so I guess this is a remake, too, of a previous game um, that I don't think was available in English. But this has, uh, I guess, the English uh, and the German rules. So uh, much thanks to the gentleman at uh, Pegasus Spiel um, for the, the trade on these. Those ought to be fun. All right. So this one wa was a booth that was close to me. And um, really great people at the booth. Um, I believe a lady runs the company, and I love seeing that. Um, and so I wanted to support the, the diversity in, in the community and to support my booth neighbors as well. I tried to buy uh, the games from all the, the surrounding booths, which I, I pretty much did. Um, except the people on the flip side of me, um, I just ran out of suitcase room. And then I ended up leaving my signs uh, behind here's how bad the Essen games addiction is. So I don't want to bring my signs back and forth to Germany every year, but it's like $600 worth of signs. Um, I left them behind here on my pallets that I'll be storing, uh, in Germany so that I could have more room for games. Hmm. An addiction. I don't know. Um, good logistics. I'm not sure, but then I, I, I got more additional room. So I wish that I had traded the people. I believe they were in mushroom games on the flip side behind, but this one, uh, I was catty corner to, uh, it's Purple Games and 27th Passenger, um, A Hunt on Rails. And so I believe this one is a another deduction game. It's a noir deduction board game. So I was really intrigued by that because if you uh, follow Crash Games closely, you'll know that we have a, a card deduction noir game from uh, Ben Pinchback and Matt Riddle called The Assassination of Jack Malone. And that'll be coming um, next year from us. Our production schedule has gotten bumped a bit, but that's a whole other conversation. Um, and so the 27th Passenger, uh, A Hunt on Rails uh, from Purple Games. So that one looks pretty cool. Um, I didn't pick up a lot of what I would call, you know, mainstream games. Because, um, again, my purpose at Essen is to take stuff that I don't think I'll be able to get back home. This is one I know I'll be able to get back home, but it's a game that's heavily played with my game group. And that's the expansion to Las Vegas, uh, Las Vegas Boulevard by Aaliyah Ravensburger. And... Um, I'm not sure if this is Richard Greco on the cover <laughs> or who that is, um, but I don't know. He's definitely, definitely shady looking, but it looks like he practices good hygiene. So I guess him and Ben Rossett have something in common that way. So uh, looking forward uh, to get this to the table uh, just because me and my game group, we play Las Vegas quite a bit um, and it hits the table a lot. So I picked up one of my few mainstream uh, pickups, Las Vegas Boulevard. Um, this game I actually didn't purchase. Um, this following one, I didn't steal it either. Well, I kind of did, and that's kind of shady, but the uh, publisher knows about it, and I'll explain the story, and that is uh, Luchador um, by Max Spindle and Mark Rivera um, on Twitter. Uh, he's the publisher. And so uh, the press area at Spiel is, like I said, where you you lay out all your games for the press to come by, take pictures and interview. There was a press hour on Tuesday or a couple hours where I stood up there, uh, answered questions, and if you don't pick your games up, they'll throw them away. And so I forgot about my games up there, actually, as I was packing up the booth Sunday night. And I ran up there 
as fast as my, my short little legs could carry me. And um, all my games were there except someone stole Paradise Fallen. Uh, okay, whatever. I hope they enjoy it. And they stole the rules for Rise. I'm not sure why they didn't steal one of the newer games or what the deal was, but Paradise Fallen was gone. Um, and so I saw Mark's copy of Luchador up there, and I'm like, well, let me pack it up. I can find him after the show and hand it off to him. And he had already gone back home. Um, so I messaged him on Twitter and let him know, hey, your copy of Luchador, I picked it up. And he's like, go ahead and keep it, which I don't own this. So awesome. Thanks so much, Mark. I'm definitely looking forward uh, to getting Luchador to the table. So I did not steal it. <laughs> That's important. That's important to communicate. So um, this next one was one that I did a bit of investigation on ahead of time. And I'm really intrigued by it. It's a Polish game called Cargo Train. And it is just cards. Uh, the box size is a bit gratuitous for, for what's inside, but I can understand the, them needing to footprint. I'm a sucker for train games, as you guys might know. And so this is a pick up and deliver card only uh, card game. So this one ought to be interesting. And that is uh, Cargo Train from Game Fabrica. So that one looks neat. This one was one that I was really really looking forward to. And I was uh, booth neighbors with these guys. They were huge fans of Pater. Uh, they both ended up buying Pater, which is a huge honor. Um, and I bought uh, their game. I was going to buy their game no matter what, but uh, one that I'm, I'm is in my top five that I'm bringing back, and that is uh, Dice Brewing. So really excited about this one. And they hooked me up with some promo boards and some promo cards, uh, but definitely... Definitely looking forward to dice brewing. I'm going to have to speed it up here. I'm already at the 27-minute mark, and we still have a, a decent amount of games to go through. Uh, the other sort of mainstream game that I picked up that I know will be available back home, but I don't know when, is uh, La Isla by Stefan Feld. Now, I actually got to meet Stefan Feld as I, as I took the train back to my hotel and got my picture taken with him. Uh, that was a really cool moment. But definitely, um, I will always buy every Stefan Feld game as it comes out as he is my, my current uh, favorite designer. Uh, nothing can ever beat Wolfgang Kramer for me, but Stefan Feld is certainly uh, right up there. So there you have uh, La Isla. Okay, this one, this is probably the silliest reason uh, that I picked up a game. And so you'll kind of have a, a, a journey into the mind of Patrick Nickel and, and the crazy way that it works. Um, and so that is El Gaucho. And this is one that I picked up purely because if you look on the back of the box, um, there's dice in a corral. Done. That is the reason. Not to mention that gauchos are a theme that's that's close to my heart. That was actually, uh, there's a game that I've been working on for quite a while called Rancheros uh, that started out as a, a, a gaucho-themed game, and it'll probably see some more changes before it, it hits uh, Kickstarter and some date in the future, but um, that is why I picked up uh, El Gaucho. So really looking forward to again because just oh, check out those pieces on the back. It looks really really cool, and so this is one I'm picking up purely based on the way uh, that it looks. This next one also picking it up purely on the aesthetics of the game, but I know that this was on a lot of people's um, wish list, and that is Colt Express, and really really neat. Uh, three-dimensional train uh, being built in this game. And so if the gameplay is there, um, then that would be phenomenal because uh, it's the aesthetics are there. And so I'm a sucker for train stuff, so really, really looking forward to uh, Colt Express. Cool. So we've got through like half of the game so far. We're doing great. Okay, moving on. This next one I'm super intrigued by and I picked this one up at the um, Taiwan Games booth. I believe it was the TBD uh, Taiwan Board Game Design booth. And that is Flip 9. It comes in a little baggie. Um, I believe it's nine cards only. Um, it was super inexpensive, three euros. And the art is just gorgeous on it. I believe it's also a train game as well. So I believe that's a little train in the bottom. I didn't know it was a train game. But I picked it up purely on... It's a one-player game that's supposed to take four minutes. So... A lot of intrigue behind this one for me. Uh, that's Flip9. These are a couple games that Ulf uh, on Twitter gave me. Um, I think they're Antoine Bowser games, and I think you're saying that uh, Pocket Rockets uh, lost its license or it's not licensed anymore by anybody, and this is an Antoine Bowser game. Um, and I'm not sure if Force Ball is also a Bowser game, uh, but Ulf was kind enough to pass these off to me because um, I wanted to play Pocket Rockets and see if it was any good. I don't know if I exist big enough to ever license an Antoine Bowser game, but 
uh, I love trying to do stuff that is outside of my comfort zone. So I'll be giving those a play and seeing what that's like. Cause I've had a couple conversations with, with Antoine and, um, he knows who I am. So I think that's maybe the hard part. So we'll see. Uh, we'll go from there. Uh, this other game was another one that yellow, uh, gifted me when I came to their booth, but definitely looks up my alley. And that is, uh, Koba, Koba Yakawa. Um, and this was a license that they picked up from Super Loot, which I actually met the guy from Super Loot, and, and I'm good friends with the guys from Yellow. And so I was trying to explain Super Loot. I'm like, do you understand what lewd means in English? <laughs> and so Super Loot, it was a big funny conversation. We all had a good a good laugh about it. But this looks like a really cool um, three player, uh, three to five player, or six, three to six player deduction game. So and it was a gift too. So um, looking forward to trying that out. Um, I stopped by uh, the Black Rock Editions booth. That's where that copy of uh, that beautiful, beautiful game, uh, Haru Ichiban, came from. But they also had some other games, um, and I picked up a good a good selection of theirs. They are cool guys at that booth, and it looked like a lot of fun. And so I picked up uh, Pro Hiss, which I believe is a deduction uh, prohibition game. And they had like some of the coolest swag. I just happened to have it right here. It's actually a little pro his keychain, but on the back is a bottle opener. I actually use this to crack open a beer Sunday night as uh, uh, I was cleaning up the booth. So that was very helpful. So thanks to, it was the designer, um, I believe uh, Mark or Tony, uh, that gave me that, that extra swag. So thank you to them. Excuse me. I apologize. My nose is getting runnier. Um, and then they also had this really cool game. It was a, a deduction bluffing game, Armadora. Um, and I really like the, uh, the art on this and the fantasy theme. This author um, actually came by my booth and was chatting with me for a bit and was wanting to trade me a game. And I'm like, I already bought your game. <laughs> that was sort of an awkward encounter because um, I ended up giving him a discount because it was so awkward. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I don't know. And so um, this game, The Boss, I picked up for a couple reasons. The designer of Prohis said this was the game that made him want to do games for BlackRock. So I thought, oh, this would be a cool game if it inspired someone enough. But I was also born in the city of Memphis and you don't see that highlighted a lot in games. So I'm like, oh, I'll pick it up. So again, a foyer into the silly, silly mind of, of me and how it works. Um, this one I actually got a chance to play uh, yesterday with Brig, who's one of the buyers for Card Kingdom in Seattle and it's Office 21. And the first play of it was really rough and I don't like how it went, um, but we played it again immediately after, and it was night and day. So we just had some confusion on the first play, uh, and after that initial confusion, um, it seemed to be okay. But I'm super intrigued by the art, and this is a game that I believe came out of Taiwan and was licensed um, licensed by, um, what is it, uh, Smiling Monster Games here uh, in Germany. So this one's actually really good. If you get a chance to pick it up, please do. I've only played it with two and it was good with two. So I imagine it gets slightly better, uh, with three or four. And again, my, my foyer into the bookstore, um, has produced some, some games for me. Um, and, uh, really quickly this game, I bought this Nerf card game just because I really like the packaging in the box. And I know that I'm not going to be able to read the cards in German, but I'm a sucker for packaging, and I wanted to take this box home. Um, I teach you is one of my favorite games of all time. I already own it. Why did I buy it? Well, I bought it in case there was an opportunity to play it here, which I didn't get an opportunity to. But I'm always giving this game away when I take it places to play. So it never hurts to have extra copies on hand, and I've not seen this version of it before. Uh, so I picked up Teach You at the bookstore. Um, I also have had a hard time finding this, and this is a fantastic game. This is Six Nimit, and this is the 10-year anniversary edition. So what that means is it comes with these these decimal cards, which add a really cool layer a strategy into it, if you can see those there. But you can just take those out, and you have the base game. So it makes no sense if you can get this not to pick up this one. And then another game that I picked up at the bookstore that I've had a very hard time finding uh, that is a ton of fun is uh, Werfel Bonanza. And this is a fantastic, fun, fast game. And uh, Gordon and I played this for like three days straight leading up to the show because uh, we hadn't brought any games. And so uh, those those two were games that we played um, as we waited for the show to start. Uh, the next thing I have here is I love my Rory Story Cubes, and so I have the next three sets. And I actually was playing these last year when Rory still had them in prototype form. We had the Meta, uh, Medic, the Intergalactic, 
and the uh, sports ones they're called score so i got it picked up my three new sets of rory story cubes pedro and rory from rory story cube sorry hit the mic there uh they're my people so i had to pick those up um this is a game that i already own and i bought it again just because i know that it'll eventually wear out and i love it and i don't want to not have it and that is quick's uh deluxe version and anytime i put this on twitter everybody goes where'd you get that version and that's so cool. And what makes it different? Well, what makes it different is this is probably the biggest box of Quicks. And the reason why it's different is it comes with a felted box lid to roll the dice into, which is fantastic. And it comes with dry erase boards and markers, which is also fantastic. So uh, I bought this again just because after a year I've played it a ton and it's starting to wear out. So I wanted to have a backup copy of Quicks Deluxe. Um, I've talked about this before uh, several times. I'm a huge fan of Cocker Lock and Poker. I'm going to have it in English, thanks to Card Kingdom and Maggie and Brig. But here at the bookstore uh, in Essen, I picked up Cocker Lock and Royal. Um, and so I'm not sure what this adds to the game. Um, I know there's not English rules in here, but I know that I'll be able to find something online probably. And um, I, honestly, I wanted to have the Cocker Lock and version over the English. So uh, this will accomplish uh, two things for me, give me an expansion and that. Um, Again, uh, my foyer to the bookstore, I picked up Super Rhino, which I believe is called Rhino Hero in the U.S. And how can I be Crash Games and there's a Rhino game that I don't have? I don't own a lot of Haba games, but I know that they're really fun. I used to sell them in the store I, I ran. And so I'm really looking forward uh, to getting this one home um, and giving it a try out. And I believe that this will have English rules. If not, I know they're available, uh, available online. Um, as I went to all the stores here in Essen, like Toys R Us, the bookstore, everywhere, I kept seeing these black stories, and they were all in German. They didn't have English, but thankfully they did have a booth at Spiel, and so I picked this up, um, and I guess it's some kind of mystery re recreation, and so I absolutely had to buy this, because I'm like, how is this so popular? So apparently this game is doing very, very well in Germany, and um, I know that it has Romeo and Juliet in it somewhere. Um, really quick, the back of it just says 50 black stories, 31 crimes, 49 dead bodies, 11 murderers, 12 suicides, and a deadly meal. How could this all happen? It's a tricky, morbid, sinister riddle stories. Solve the riddles. And so this looked really intriguing to me, so I picked up uh, black stories. Um, then uh, Eric Martin from Board Game Geek was kind enough, kind enough to come by. So uh, Jason Katarski, uh, Matt Riddle, if you're watching, I did pick you up a copy of Body Party. And thankfully, Eric left one for me. Uh, this is published by Cocktail Games, and this is Eric Martin's design. Uh, and it says it has English rules in it. I know nothing about this game other than Eric was kind enough to gift me uh, a couple copies uh, for me, Matt, and Jason. And so I'll be bringing uh, Body Party uh, back back with me and these last couple and we're almost done here um, are uh, gifts from my buddy Tony at uh, USAopoly and um, he came by my booth and gifted me a copy of The Walking Dead Bang. I actually played this uh, last year or no it was this year it was this year um, in the summer at the uh, USAopoly uh, warehouse in San Diego where I'm from so I always go by USAopoly when I'm back home and this was actually a really cool version of Bang. And since I don't own Bang, I own Bang the Dice Game, um, this will be the version of Bang uh, that I play. And these next two um, are really, really fun, but I don't, I first, when I heard about it, I'm like, eh, it basically war. But it's got some interesting strategic decision as part of their tack decks, and it's a ton of fun. Um, I played it with my wife. And she's like, when these come out, you have to get these. And so it's uh, the Walking Dead tack decks. Uh, they have a pirate one, which is my wife's favorite. But the Walking Dead, I'm a big fan of the Walking Dead. And so this one will be for me. And then my nephew Spencer, if you've watched the vlog, you know Spencer. He's a big Halo fan. And so they have Halo tack decks. Uh, so Tony was kind enough to give me that. And then um, I'll have to pick up uh, the pirate one because that's my wife's favorite one. And that is pretty much it. I have two last things. Um, uh, some Russian Railroads promos from the Hans Zimgluck booth, and I guess there's some Stone Age promos on there as well. Russian Railroads will most likely be my game of the year. The year's not over yet, and so I have to see. But, yeah, the Russian Railroad promos were a must-have for me. And this last thing is wicked cool. So uh, those that know me super well know that I'm a weirdo. And I'm a weirdo in a lot of ways, but particularly I like the way that games smell. I like the way the rules smell, the cards smell, and one of the best-smelling things 
games in any game that I own is the Leather Cup and Stone Age, which sadly, since I've had Stone Age for so long, the Leather Cup has gone away. But I almost cracked my pants when I saw the giant Leather Stone Age cup. Here's my hand. Here's the cup. Here's the deck of cards. Here's the cup. It is a huge Stone Age Leather Dice Cup. It doesn't smell like the Stone Age Dice Cup, which was really disappointing, but you know, it is a huge cup. Like, look at those four dice in there. So I'm like, how could I not bring back this giant leather cup? And that's pretty much it, everybody. I'm definitely over on my time mark. I'm at the 40 minutes. So thanks for tuning in to uh, our third and final uh, live vlog post from Essen, Germany. Hope you uh, have enjoyed watching these. I plan on doing these when I travel and I plan on doing some on the go too. So you're really gonna wanna subscribe to our channel. Um, follow us on Facebook and Twitter and check out our website too at crashgamesaz.com. Thanks for watching everybody. I'm coming back on Saturday. See you soon.